Good morning, folks. Special video came out last night. New research group starting today. But we've got a lot to cover this morning here, including some findings that scientists aren't going to see coming. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star with the southern coronal hole still confined as bright spot active regions creep across the disk. Only the northern grouping has proper sunspots associated with it, but no solar flaring. It is in decay, and it's heading for the limb here this week. Solar wind here. Folks, even that data error spike upward doesn't get us into scary plasma stream range, and it was a data glitch. Geomagnetic conditions could barely be any quieter here. The rains in Brazil have exacerbated what was already too much to keep the landslides at bay. Over 40 dead as of this morning, but they're still frantically digging. Also continuing that absurd locust invasion in Africa, it is now one of the most devastating on record. Meanwhile, folks, you probably heard about falling iguanas due to cold in Florida, but similar frigid struggles are plaguing turtles in the Carolinas. And lastly on the weather, after a record warm end to 2019, Fairbanks hasn't hit 5 degrees Fahrenheit yet in 2020, with most spent well below freezing. We're going to go to the Tarantula Nebula here to get something pretty before doing some more complex science. Spitzer, Hubble, combining for a piece that helps them say goodbye to Spitzer as it will be turned off for good in three days. Tarantula is located in the Large Magellanic Cloud, and it was one of the favorite targets for Spitzer given its active star formation contrasting with cold, stringy filaments. It's hard to imagine how much better the James Webb Telescope will see the heavens provided they ever get it up there. Moving on to a very silly article. They want to rebuild the world with wood instead of concrete and steel, which sounds fun except you need to harvest all the trees to do it, which can no longer take carbon out of the atmosphere, and so not only would you be setting up kindling drying stations across the world, and we'd call them cities, but also dead wood does nothing for the atmosphere. Okay, now on to some real stuff. Solar Orbiter is going to be the first satellite in decades to properly see the sun's poles. This is going to aid in watching space weather, understanding solar eruptions, and also the sun's polar magnetic field, which may play a role in earthquakes. Wink. And if someone wouldn't mind hashing out in the comments the story behind that little wink, I would love to see which veterans are on it. Moving on to two climate surprises. The first comes from Antarctica, as the thinning of glaciers has totally flipped the script since about 2010. They saw slight changes and figured it was the trend from global warming, but now it has reversed entirely and swapped fast and slow moving locations, maybe not quite as predictable as they'd like it to be. Last article today sees phytoplankton striking again. Talk about unpredictable. Under initial predictions over a decade ago, they should all be about dead by now, but they're thriving, growing in size, and actually taking more carbon out of the atmosphere than before. Imagine that, when there's more food around, they eat. This is providing increased longevity to the phytoplankton, increased food production up the marine ecosystem food chain, and even though carbon dioxide has very little to do with climate change, their carbon sink will make even the looniest extreme leftists smile for a little. Some quick notes to end here. First, all of these new satellites that seem to be crowding the sun-watching game are aiming to make sure they see what's coming. While in 1859 there was a near total field overtaking by the Carrington event flare, what they're really worried about is something bigger, super flare or worse. They say that all nova, sub-super class, do recur, and that many stars have hundreds to thousands of year cycles. Our sun can micronova, and evidence suggests it's done it before. While the unaware masses would watch a peculiarly spectacular sight in the night sky, the officials would start to be worrying about the Earth doing its magnetar impression, as the lowest level L-shells are not only energized but compressed towards Earth, begging for a discharge. The history, the evidence, the astrophysics, and the general timeline, all detailed in our cosmic disaster movie which can be found right below the video in the description box. Next note. Folks, the earthquake group is set up and has begun exchanging some info and ideas. Observers research has kicked off here and their organization is beginning while the next group is announced today. This one is a subtopic in the survival realm, primitive technology, including things like bushcraft, technology that preceded electricity, what you can get now, how to build, how to survive, and this is different than prepping supplies. This is how you get your own after. This isn't Faraday cage and solar panels. It's how to build a stove, a house, irrigation for crops. 
Next week, we will open that prepper group, which includes the higher technologies, but for now, this is a bit more specialized of an interest, one that takes us back to the Stone Age. Email us if you can contribute here and are willing. Finally, folks, our Cosmic Scales from Astros to Cosmos video came out last night. That's getting us ready for the follow-up series to the full Plasma Cosmology movie. Last night's video, that full movie, and how professors responded to the movie are all linked in the description box below this video. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.